pop artists are artists who find inspiration by things in popular culture. One thing we see a lot of right now are candy or conversation hearts. We are going to be using oil pastels by Faber-Castell, a little bit of baby oil, and some Q-tips today to create an optical illusion. That's right, we are going to do a little bit of art magic, taking a flat piece of paper and with our oil pastels, creating works of art that have the illusion of looking three-dimensional. So let's get started. All right, guys, take a close look here and tell me if you can figure out which one of these candy hearts is actually flat. Any takers? Well, you probably guessed it's definitely not this one because this candy heart is a sculpture. It has three things. It has height, it has width, and it also has something called depth, meaning it goes back into space. And those three things make it three-dimensional. Take a look at this work of art. None of these have actual depth. It's just a flat drawing. But when you draw something, you can create an optical illusion. Now that means essentially eyeball, optical, illusion, magic. That's right. You can create magic with your art. Even though this paper is flat, it is two-dimensional, it has height, and it has width, you can create the illusion of depth. And I'm going to show you how to do that today when you create your candy heart collage. So the first thing you'll have is a sheet of paper and a template. You don't have to use a template if you don't want to. I like to use a template because I want all of my candy hearts to be uniform or be the same. When you place your template on your paper, imagine if you had a box of candy hearts and they spilled across your paper. So I'm just gonna lay my candy heart down and start tracing. When you trace with a pencil, you should press lightly. I'm actually pressing firmly only because I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. Now I've got one. Let me see, I think I'll have another one over here. I would think that you would need at least four candy hearts on your paper. At least meaning you could have more, but you cannot have any less. And I think it looks more interesting if your candy hearts aren't all in a row. Think about your composition or how an eye, your eye moves across your paper. So right now, my eye is just engaged or looking right here, but I want the entire paper to be interesting. So I think I'll add another heart, maybe here. That looks interesting. And I think because I have a little bit of a blank area, I'm going to add another one. This one I'm going to have overlap here. And right now my heart has height and width, but what it's missing is the illusion of depth. So the sculpture has height, width, and depth. So what I'm about to show you how to draw is this edge right here. And notice when I hold the candy heart like this, you only see the edge on the left side here and there. That's because the other part of the heart, you can't be seen. It's where my hand is touching unless you want to angle your candy heart that way, in which case it would be the opposite. You wouldn't see both sides unless your candy heart got ran over by a truck and then the whole thing was smushed, in which case it wouldn't be a sculpture anymore. So when I draw, I'm drawing on one side of my candy heart, not around all of it. So my first step is to find the top middle of each of the bumps of the heart, because I can see from the way I'm holding it that that is where the dimensionality begins. So I'm gonna start right here and find the top middle and I'm just putting small tick marks right there. And now I'm going back to look at this and I see that it starts to pull away, the line comes away, curves down and meets at the bottom. Goes away and curves and ends or it appears to end right there because the other heart shape is there. So I'm gonna start with that one because it's a little bit easier to draw. And I'm starting here and I'm moving away from the heart and then I'm curving down 
eventually my line right here matches this one right there. They become parallel. This one, it moves away from the heart. And then I start to do the same thing where I'm making a parallel or copycat line. I'm going to stop where the other one stopped and make a line that goes back. Piece of cake. Now suddenly I have a drawing that appears to have height, width, and depth. I'm going to do that to the rest of my... So when you are coloring your candy hearts today, you're going to be using oil pastels. And when you're using your oil pastels, you will have just about every color in the rainbow. Some colors I would not recommend using because they aren't exactly the color of candy hearts would be black and brown. So I'm just going to move those out of my tray, but everything else I can use. I will definitely be using a lot of white today because white is how you make a color light. When you make a color light, it is called a tint. Candy hearts are usually tints of color or light colors. Some people call them pastels. I could use my white to make a light purple today for a great flavor candy heart. I could use it with yellow to make either lemon or banana flavored. There's an orange flavor candy heart. There's also a winter green. And of course, there's cherry or strawberry. If you want to invent a flavor like a dark green or a blue, go for it. So here's all you have to do to get started. I'm gonna go ahead and I think use orange this time. You can see I already tried it out with my red. And your first step is just going to be to out line your heart. Now, if you've worked with oil pastels before, you know that you never want to take your hand and wipe it because doing so will cause your oil pastels to smear, which might not look so beautiful on your artwork. So if you see those little oil pastel crumbs and you're tempted to wipe them away, just let it go. Leave those alone. Now that I've got that outlined and I'm only outlining the surface of the heart, I'm not working on the depth, I'm going to color. And when I'm coloring, I'm staying within my lines, but I'm not too worried about filling in every last spot. So notice that I chose one direction of color. In this case, I chose to color up and down, and I stuck with that. Now that I'm finished with that, and I'm filling in any of those bigger spots I see, I'm going to take my white. Now I did just use the white on red, and I don't want that red to contaminate or mix in with my orange. So to clean this, I can either get a piece of paper or I can just use my table because it has paper on it. That looks clean to me. Now when I add color to this, I'm going to do something called cross hatching. When I originally made the lines for the orange, they were vertical. Now I'm going to do cross hatching. That means I'm going to have lines going in the opposite direction or perpendicular. So these lines that I'm about to make are going to cross in the other direction. And as I do that, I can see I'm already starting to see a tint of orange or a light color of orange. And again, you don't have to fill it in all the way. I'm about to show you a cool trick that you can use to do that. So now that that's filled in and I've cross hatched the two colors together, I'm going to use today to blend it all in a little container of baby oil. When I use this baby oil, I'm not going to place the container on my paper, but keep it nearby. I'm going to also be using a Q-tip. I'm going to use the Q-tip and the baby oil to blend the two colors together. So to do so, I'm using small circles and this will help mix the two colors together. This oil makes the oil pastel more of a liquid, gives it a little bit viscosity and the ability to move. And so it really helps to blend in my colors and fill in all of those white spots. So I'm gonna work on using my small circles and baby oil to blend my colors in now.
Now that you understand how to make the top surface of your candy heart appear flat by using your two kinds of oil pastel, your color and your white to make it light, which you know is called a tint, I'm going to go ahead and work on doing that to the rest of the tops of my candy hearts. Now that I'm done with all the surfaces of the heart, I'm going to show you how to make your depth appear as though it has some depth and it isn't so flat because right now your drawing still only has height and width, but it's really lacking that illusion of depth. So to do that, I'm going to use the same colors I used for this particular candy heart. I have a white that's dirty, so I'm just going to clean it off on a piece of paper or my table. And I want this to look like it's further away, this to look like it's coming closer, this to look like it's further away. When an artist is trying to create the illusion that something is coming closer, it's usually lighter in color. When an artist is trying to push something back in space to create the illusion that it's further back in space, it's usually darker. So I'm going to start with this part right yeah. here, and I'm going to color this. Actually, first I'll go ahead and outline. So that way that oil pastel will create kind of like a barrier for me so I won't accidentally get out of my lines. And I'm going to press nice and hard, creating a dark value. Value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So I made that very dark. And now I'm going to make this down here very dark because these are the two parts of the depth that I want to push back into space. Now with my white, I'm going to just go ahead and color this all white. I'm going to overlap, making sure to have my white go over my orange a little bit to create a different value of orange. Overlap my white to create a different value of orange. So that way it creates something called a gradation. A gradation is when a color goes from dark to medium and then gradually turns to light. And then my gradation is also going back to dark. To blend those colors in a little bit, I'll just use my baby oil trick again just to fill in any of those spots. And that will also help blend my colors in a little bit for my gradation. And now all of a sudden I have this optical illusion that part of my heart, this part of my heart, the side is really coming forward and then receding and going back. Kind of the same thing except you're only going to be creating a dark value, I'll outline it first, a dark value at the top, light at the bottom, and then baby oil trick to blend the two colors in. Your goal is to create a gradation of value, meaning it will go from dark to medium to light. So now Candy hearts are called candy hearts because they say things, which is the best part about making your artwork is you get to decide what you want your candy hearts to say. I just picked some out of the candy heart bag. I love the ones I picked. Dream big, my love, sweet stuff, wink, talk, and I dig you. So be thinking about what kinds of things you want your candy hearts to say, and you'll have a piece of paper that looks like this. For now, I'm going to move my artwork out of the way. It's never a good idea to work on top of your artwork for fear you might damage it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and start with my first saying. So I'm going to have my first saying. I think I really liked sweet stuff. 
Now with Candy Hearts, you can either have one line or you can have two lines. And since I have two words for sweet stuff, I think it might be a little bit better to write it here and here. It's a good idea to go ahead and write it on the side of your paper just to make sure that you know how to spell your words. You don't want to accidentally have things spelled incorrectly on your candy hearts. So double check your spelling. Sweet stuff. Got it. Now I need to go ahead and find the middle of my words because usually candy hearts, the words are centered like my pencil is in the center, meaning that the words don't start here and end here, meaning that everything is centered in the middle. So what I'm going to do is center these words. And the best way to find the center is to count one, two, three, four, five. So I know that this E is at the center. One, two, three, four, five. I know that this U is in the center. So for me, that means the E will go here and the U will go there. When you write your words, candy hearts are usually all caps or all capital letters. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that my letters go from my top line to my bottom line. So I'm going to go ahead and start sketching in sweet stuff using all caps, meaning all capital letters, making sure to spell my words correctly, writing my words neatly so they are legible, making sure they are centered, meaning there's not a big space over here and a small amount of space over there. Sweet looks pretty centered. Go ahead and do the U. I'm going to have to crunch these letters together a little bit more because you can see I don't have as much space to write. Okay, I think sweet stuff looks great. I'm double checking my spelling. Everything's in caps. Everything is centered. To get this to appear on my artwork, I have to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to flip my paper over and I'm going to color really hard with my pencil on the back. This is a trick we're going to use and it's good to cross hatch your lines. We already know what that means. Go ahead and color only where you know your words are going to be on the back. Okay, so I've got that on there and with my pencil, I'm going to press really hard over my words. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a copy of my words onto my heart. And all my words will be nice and centered if I made sure to scribble really nice and hard on the back. Perfect. I can see that some of my letters didn't show up all the way. That's okay. And I see this letter got really close to the edge. Well, then I know not to trace it like that. The words are almost always printed in red. So I'm going to go ahead and use my red oil pastel and I'm just tracing over my letters slowly and carefully. Now that I'm finished with one, I could find a friend in the room. I could find a friend in the room who already has one heart done that they used on their artwork, that they've got it all centered and I like their saying and I can trade mine. That way I don't have to keep creating all of these. However, if you want to make a different one, then you can get another sheet of paper like this at the store. I think I'll just do this one. So I'm gonna go. I hope you had as much fun as I did creating your three-dimensional conversation hearts today using your oil pastels by Faber-Castell, a little bit of baby oil, and some Q-tips. Have so much fun.